Hey crafty fam, it's Alex Vanover and welcome back to my craft room. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to screen print multiple shirts at once because honestly, I think screen printing makes the most sense when you have multiple shirts to do. So let's get started. All right, crafty fam. So the first step to making screen printed shirts is to um, figure out what decal you're going to use. You're going to be cutting this decal out of adhesive vinyl in order to put on your screen. And when you're just starting out, I recommend starting with just a one color design because I think that keeps it a lot simpler. So we're going to make this super cute hoppy Easter shirt. And the best way that I have found to um, line up designs on your shirt is to create a little hole in the top of your design. I got this tip from the channel Pigskins and Pigtails that does a bunch of screen printing. She is amazing. So if you haven't checked out her channel, make sure that you go check out Pigskins and Pigtails. But let me show you how this works. So we're going to insert a little circle. And we're just going to make that circle like three quarters of an inch wide, nothing crazy. And we are going to use this to um, line up the design on each collar of our shirt so that we make sure that we are applying our design straight on each t-shirt. I'm going to select the circle and then press shift and select the design as well. And then under the align command, I'm going to click center horizontally because I want to make sure that this circle is going to basically be the collar. And then we're going to place our design three inches below so that it goes three inches below the collar on the shirt. So now that it's centered, I'm going to move my circle down on to the two inch line right here. And then we're going to move our design down a little bit further. We're going to use the grid along this side. And it looks like this is the three inch mark. So we're going to go down one, two, three inches like this. So this is an inch, this is an inch, and this right here is an inch. And that way our design is um, exactly three inches below the shirt. So that our, makes our placement when you have multiple shirts a lot easier. So then, because the circle is a different color, we need to make sure that we attach them. And that's all you have to do. So the next thing you're going to do is go to the Make It screen. And even though we are cutting this out of adhesive vinyl, we are going to mirror our design because that's just going to make it easier. We're going to apply the design to the back of the screen so that your squeegee doesn't mess up any of the pieces of vinyl. And so that's why we are mirroring it. And I'm going to center my design a little bit more on my mat just because I want to have plenty of room around my design um, so that I don't have to do as much taping. That will make a lot more sense when I show it to you on the screen, but notice that I've moved it down a little bit and closer to the center of the mat. So then I'm going to click continue. And you can use any color, color permanent adhesive vinyl that you want. As long as you're using permanent adhesive vinyl, it doesn't matter what color because the vinyl is just going to act as a stencil. It's not going to have any effect on the color that you choose for screen printing. So I'm going to set my cut to the vinyl setting. So I'm going to cut out my stencil and then I'll show you what it looks like to apply it to the screen. So the next step to screen printing is to reverse weed your design. And that just means to remove the parts of the vinyl that you would normally keep. So the reason that you reverse weed your mirrored vinyl is because this vinyl is going to act like a stencil. So when we put it on the back of the screen, it's going to allow ink to pass through all of the open areas of the vinyl, which is why we remove the parts that we normally keep. So the next step is to add transfer tape to our design so we can move it over to our screen. But transfer tape tends to be a little bit too sticky and it can make it hard to remove the transfer tape off the screen and leave the vinyl. So I'm actually going to stick it to a shirt first to add a little bit of lint before I put it on my design. Let me show you what I mean. So next, I'm going to lay my vinyl stencil down on to my transfer tape. And you want to try to do this slowly and carefully so that you don't introduce many bubbles into the vinyl and the transfer tape. So if you can go slow and do it with a, sque a squeegee, that is what I would recommend. Okay. 
Next, I'm gonna spend a little more time burnishing my vinyl onto my transfer tape, but you don't wanna use too much pressure because that can also make it difficult to transfer your vinyl to the screen. All right, so now it's time to remove the backing so we can add the vinyl onto the screen. Oh wait, actually before I do that, I am gonna cut the sides of my vinyl in a little bit just so that the sides of the design don't hang over the edge of the screen and allow any bubbles to be introduced. Now I'm gonna remove the backing of my vinyl. And I like to remove the backing from the vinyl instead of the other way around because I just think it's easier to see if you have any pieces of the design that are sticking to the backing this way. But you can certainly remove the vinyl from the backing instead of going this direction if you like. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. The middle of the P is trying to stick up in, is trying to stick on my backing. So this way it's easier to just work it off like this. Alright, so now we are going to apply the vinyl to the back of the screen. This is the reason that we mirrored it in the first place. So I'm just going to try to apply my vinyl with few, as few bubbles as possible. And you want to try to work any of the bubbles that you do see pop up work them out of the vinyl. Now, if they're in an area like this where there's no letters, it's not as big of a deal, but these areas around here, like this large bubble, I have to get rid of that because if I don't, the ink is gonna leak underneath the vinyl and it's not gonna give me a good crisp screen print. So I like to flip my screen over and burnish from this direction. Okay, so let's remove the transfer tape. I usually like to flip my screen over and give it one more good burnish. You can start to see little bubbles in your vinyl when they look like this through the screen. So I'm gonna do my best to get rid of those. I'm gonna flip my screen back over and I'm gonna tape around any areas that have exposed screen. So this is gonna allow stray ink from getting into my design and leaking onto my shirt in places that I don't want it. Or actually, I typically do this from the front. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Typically when I go into corners, I like to actually run the tape onto the sides of the frame just to make sure that I don't have any holes or gaps. really sloppy with my ink so I like to cover every inch of my screen with painter's tape. If you're neater than I am and you have better control over your squeegee then maybe you don't need to cover every inch like I do but I just do it as a precaution. 
All right, so now that our screen is all ready to go, I'm gonna show you how to set up your shirts so that you make sure that you line up your stencil every time the right way. So the reason for the little hole in the top of our stencil is because we are gonna use little round stickers. I bought these dot stickers at Target, but you can buy them at just about any store. But we're gonna put these stickers at the top of the collar here to make sure that the design is three inches below the collar, just like we want it to be. And you should do this for however many shirts you're screen printing. I like to apply these dots before I have my screen covered in ink so that it's quick and easy for me to line these up. Because the longer you take in between your screen your screen prints, the less that shirts that you can do at once. So to get started, you wanna lay out your shirt with not too many wrinkles in it. And you wanna line up the hole at the top of the screen with the little round sticker. And since that's exactly the size of the sticker, what I like to do is put a note card underneath it just in case any ink were to get under that circle. But we're really gonna concentrate the ink down this way. So I'm gonna be using Speedball Opaque White Screen Printing Ink. I love this stuff because even though I'm not using a light colored shirt, it's still gonna look really pretty and crisp. And um, I really, really love this also because after you press it, it has like a mild metallic finish to it. So it's a really, really pretty color. I'll link this for you guys in the description if you're interested in checking out this color. And then to scoop out my color, I just use like a disposable spoon. I use it several times until I can't get the color off anymore and then I throw it away. So I just keep it super, super simple. So when you're applying your ink to your screen, you wanna make sure that you're nice and generous with it because you can put any unused ink back into your um, container. So you don't have to worry about too much waste with this product, which is really, really nice. So you wanna make sure you have plenty of ink up there and you wanna make sure that you go the full width of your design. You don't wanna be um, missing any of these outer edges of your layers. All right. You can see a bubble in my screen right there. All right, so then I'm going to use my squeegee. I'm gonna hold down the screen with one hand and I'm gonna use medium pressure to drag the ink all the way down. And I'm gonna do a couple of passes just to make sure that I cover the entire design. And you don't want any lines in the middle of your design, so lines like that you have to make sure that you fix before you lift up your squeegee. And I don't see any big crazy clumps or anything like that. So um, and when I lay down my squeegee, I like to use one of these Walmart pantry baskets. That's where I bought this, um, but that way my squeegee fits in it perfectly and I don't have to worry about getting ink all over the table. So next I'm gonna hold down to my shirt and I'm gonna lift up my screen and I'm gonna move it out of the way and then I'm going to lay down my next shirt. So now I'm gonna lay out the next shirt and then I'm just gonna follow the same procedure. I'm gonna line up my screen with my little dot. Like that. And then I'm gonna put my note card underneath just in case I need it. And then I'm gonna reapply my ink and start again. I did get a little bit of a line right here with ink so I might lay down a little more painter's tape just to make sure we cover the whole design. I don't know how well that'll stick because there's already ink on my screen. I just don't wanna make any more lines on my shirts. All right, so I'm gonna add a bunch of ink at the top of my screen. And a question that I get most often when I am doing screen printing videos is everybody always wants to know how many shirts you can screen print at once. And the answer to that question is basically based on you. It depends on how quickly you work um, because you can basically work until your screen begins to get clogged. This is water-based um, screen printing ink. It's not paint, by the way. It's screen printing ink, and it does tend to dry quickly, so th that's why I say that it depends on how quickly you work. I would say if you were teed up and 
ready to go. You could probably do in the ballpark of maybe 10 or 15 shirts at a time or so, um, but it just depends on you. So I'm gonna hold down my screen again and I'm gonna just drag my squeegee down my design. And do a couple of passes. I apply a little extra pressure toward the end just to get any um, extra clumps out of the way, by the way. So I'll show you what it looks like when I add, when I take the ink back off. I just kind of scrape my spoon over top of my squeegee. Whoops. <laughs> like that. And I can add all that ink back into my jar. So it's not a super wasteful craft, but this is why it's great if you are going to be making multiple shirts at once. The reason that I recommend that you do multiple shirts at once for screen printing is because it's kind of a lot of work to set up the screen just for one or two shirts. So an ideal screen printing project, in my opinion, would be like three, four, five shirts at once. Anything less than that, you can use HTV. And there you have it. So I did get a little line here that um, was not covered by my tape, so I'll go wash that off while the ink is still wet. So the next step in screen printing is to let this ink completely dry, and you want to do that for at least a couple of hours, um, if not overnight, ideally. And after these two shirts are dry, I'll show you how I heat set them in my heat press, because when you use water-based screen printing ink, you absolutely have to heat set them in order for them to be permanent when washed. Okay, crafters, we are to the last step of screen printing our shirt, and that is to heat set our ink using a heat press or an iron or an easy press if you have it. It's important to heat set your ink because after you heat set it, that makes the screen printing ink permanent on the shirt, just like using heat transfer vinyl. So I'm going to heat press each, or excuse me, I'm going to heat set each shirt at 320 degrees for 40 seconds, and then I'll show you the final result. I was able to let my shirts dry a full 24 hours because that's just how much time I had before I had to heat set them. But if you don't have time for 24 hours, you want to let your shirts sit to dry a minimum of a couple of hours, but overnight if possible, especially if you have a thicker um, layer of ink on your shirt, you want to make sure to not press it until it's completely dry. Look how adorable these shirts turned out. I just absolutely love the look that screen printing gives. And I hope that this video answered all your questions about screen printing multiple shirts at one time. If you have any questions, please be sure to drop those in the comments for me. And if you're interested in shopping any of the Speedball products, I have them all linked from Amazon in the description of this video for you. I hope we can craft again soon.